we all get to stand. Good evening, graduates. It's indeed a uh, privilege to be a part of your commencement, and as we pray in this invocation, it's fitting that we simply pray some words of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for this night. Thankful that it takes place in a world that seems to be moving in some new directions. A world where the Soviet president can walk our city streets and be welcomed. We thank you for family, for the mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers, for grandparents and aunts and uncles and friends, and for all those who have loved and nurtured these graduates through the years. We thank you, O oh God, for education, for all who lead the way in pursuit of truth and knowledge and insight. We thank you for superintendents and principals and administrators, for teachers and students, for secretaries and assistants, for cooks and custodians, and for coaches, for everyone who shares something of themselves with the students who graduate tonight. And finally, we thank you, God, for these graduates, for their individual gifts and talents, for their special personalities, for their energy, for their pursuits, both trivial and profound, and especially for their futures, for hopes and dreams ready to be fulfilled. Be with them and with us all tonight. Amen. I'd just like to make a small note to um, all faculty members tonight that uh, everybody in the graduating class of 1990 is wearing a hat. Anyway, as president of the senior class at Fridley High School, I'd like to welcome you, the parents, friends, faculty, administrators, school board members, and above all else, my graduating class of 1990 to the, to the commencement ceremonies this year the 1990 commencement, so commencement ceremonies here at Fridley High School. It's times like these where reflecting on our past seems to be as important to us as looking to our future. In the words of William Shakespeare, we know what we are, but we know not what we may be. And with that, I would like all the seniors to remember those words as they're out experiencing the new untasted spices of life. I'd like to... Uh, Welcome you once again, everybody. Seniors, thank you, and good luck.
got to tell you guys, I haven't been this excited or overwhelmed since Freedom Jam. <laughs> when I was first picked to give the speech, I was instantly paralyzed with fear. Um, <clears throat> but after deliberation, <clears throat> excuse me, I decided you guys were all my acquaintances and friends and that I could have a good time with it. A lot has been said and reflected upon lately, our, our future, and it seems like everybody's coming up to us and asking us, what are you doing next year? What are you doing? And I thought it would be nice if we took a little more relaxing look at the past, and maybe we could evoke or stir up some old memories. And it all started with grade school. Grade school was a time when our only responsibilities was really were to put away our Legos and take care of our bike. It was a time when homework was coloring and then you rode around the gym on those awesome scooters. <laughs> At this time, my idea of a major problem was when mom made you wear those geeky tough skins with the elastic top. <laughs> or when she got the Nike gender switch. You, may, you remember how that was all color-coded, you know, comparing to your sex. And I remember my mother saying once, Honey, I bought you some Nikes. You know, and I'm all pumped. I'm thinking, yeah, some Nikes, you know, pretty hip. I come in there and she's holding up blue <laughs> Nikes. And no go there. But all in all, it was good times. Um, remember the days of blacktop glory? The days when we were out playing four square? Well, I remember those times a, a lot. And I, one athletic feat stands out in my mind particularly, and I really had the honor uh, to witness it. Um, the day was nice, and on shine the sun. This was capture the flag. To recap it, there's a 20-yard neutral zone, 100 yards to each side, a blaze orange traffic pylon sitting upon this pile on a beanbag. The objective, to go into the enemy's territory without getting touched, take the flag, and retrieve it back to the neutral zone. That day I took left flank. Dane Van Halsen took right. We took off from the neutral zone, and boy, we were going. We were going fast. We were running, we were running, we were running. We cut, we sped, we ran, we got to the first wave of attackers. As we looked ahead, we seen the orange pile on. There was three guards. They looked pretty tough. All of them females, but they're in close proximity. <laughs> About 15, 14, 10 yards were closing in. I look over at Dane in a state of indecision, and all at once he comes, running, almost getting touched by the girls, leaps like a graceful swan taking off from a placid lake, clutches the flag in midair, tossing it to me, leaving only the road to victory. Now, in an analogy sense, this is our trials and tribulations of school. Getting through the first wave of attackers is our grade school years. Closing in on the flag, the trial period, that would be the middle school years. And actually clutching the flag, that's the senior high. But today, men and women of class 90, today we've got the flag and we're crossing over the line. But this is only the beginning, leading up to the big one, a district track meet, the senior high. Each year the pilgrimage was made and we felt the bittersweet victory or the pangs of defeat. I can still remember coming around that, the bend of the one thing, of the one of the track there, looking and seeing everybody in the crowd, chariots of fire going through my head as I'm running, sprinting out. Those were the days, boy. You guys remember the flag patrol? Flags up, flags down, cross. I guess I didn't have what it take to hold the orange, the blaze orange flag. And I envied them in their annual trip to Valley Fair. In fifth grade, we were taught the touchy subject of sex education. The boys with Mr. Grahek, and the girls with Mrs. Swore, they answered me pressing questions about what goes where and who does what. We were embarrassed, but it was good times. I remember distinctly getting in trouble in Mrs. Swore's class for putting soap on the water fountain. Needless to say, this went over like one floating in a punch bowl. And two things you always got to be assured of in a classroom. One, there's going to be a class clown, all right? And two, there's usually a class squealer or a narc, and the two just don't mix. I would like to entitle the middle school years, the years of the Twookie. Of course, after the delicious peanut butter wafer snack we were introduced to in the middle school lunch. This can also be known as um, the age of breakdancing slash rubber finger. Um, middle school was weird because most of us went through um, some changes entitled the pubescent era. And because we all reached physical maturity at different times, us late bloomers were sometimes shunned. And it wasn't uncommon to hear the locker room chant, Waldy don't have no hair on his pits. And for some, this was hard. No. This was hard. 
This was hard, but all in all, it was good times. Do you guys remember Time Out? You know, new Jane Olson, yeah. Time Out was a place you went to when you got in trouble, and let me tell you, I spent so much time in there, I could have drawn a detailed schematic map of the grout lines in each cubicle. If you're lucky, you'd get the stall with colored paper, you know, and you could stare at that all. Right now, my mom's probably thinking, Adam, just because you were a degenerate, you shouldn't flaunt this knowledge. It was good times. Do you guys remember the senior high pop choir, how they'd always come there, and they'd sing the same songs each year, they'd be like all dramatic. Johnny, can you hear me? Or else it was, I'm betting, betting on Jesus. And of course, the infamous Hey Jude. Telling you, that wasn't dramatic. You know, we're all sitting down, listening to these guys, and they just run out there, big seniors, wide stance, put the bells of their horns in the air, and they start playing. I mean, we were holding up our lighters, boy. It was like a concert. <laughs> but by eighth grade, you know, we pretty much could do the numbers ourselves. Towards the end of eighth grade, we were hearing horror stories about entering the senior high and uh, how the seniors dropped you off at Santigo in your underwear. What made you play in the ever deteriorating Moore Lake West Side? Um, I still remember 10 of my friends, and you guys know who you are. Ran home from school every day. Running home from school, boy, you know. Seniors try to omit this from their history, but that's a fact. And uh, some of us found the rumors true. Um, I had uh, the privilege to scuffle on the disease-ridden filth. Um, we conquered the ninth grade science project, and um, we had to put up with Mr. Nelson's antics. He's got like a handful of material, and just every year he just uses it over and over again. If we went down there right now, he'd be telling the same jokes he told us. At this point, we're truly peons, and still, all I can remember is the good times. Um, you guys remember foreign languages? Talk about tension, at least for me. I mean, we're mixed in with these upperclassmen, you know. And uh, Mrs. T would always, I would always be sort of a smart aleck in her class, I suppose I deserved it, but she'd always come up to me, she'd always say, Adam, it seems to me you've had a little too much sugar in your lunch. So I just, I just said, hey, you know, what can you do after someone says like that? And I remember one time, one time, you know, we had a little contest, or it was like a, a game type deal in Spanish. We were all doing it in Spanish tonight, you know, I'm sort of a smart aleck. Ms. T, are there going to be prizes awarded? She just looked down at me and simply said, Adam, your prize will simply to be go down to Dr. Ames' office. I was like, hey, you know, what do you do? About this time, I, I, uh, I discovered a new phenomenon, uh, shop class. And Lord knows I took so many shop classes, I could have worn coveralls to school. I mean, sometimes I filled in for the teachers on vacation. But I did take full advantage of the facility, and in all seriousness, seriousness, I received a foundation of knowledge that would be beneficial. It is now, and it will be in the future. And you guys ever notice that shop teachers always have less than 10 fingers? I think it's genetic. Um, but truthfully now, Mr. Leffler, Mr. Cratch, Cratch, Kratz, Mr. Bulk, and everybody else in that department have really touched my life and their hardworking attitudes and their down-to-earth teaching. I'll never forget when we were back here making the three-bedroom rambler that we made in building trades. And Mr. Mr. Kratz, apparently the nail puller, which is similar, similar to like a crowbar, fell and he broke two of his teeth. Both two of his teeth were chipped out and he had, you could see the nerves and everything. You know, it was obvious it was a painful experience. And, and I remember I didn't see the, it, the uh, incident actually happen. I just seen him walking back with his ham, hands cupped around his mouth. I said, Mr. Kratz, uh, what, what happened, man? Are you all right? Oh. He says, oh, I just lost a couple teeth back there. I, what a stud, you know what I mean? I mean, you know, that's the kind of, t you know, I mean, that's the kind of teaching we need. Um, when we reached 10th grade, we at least didn't fear the initiation. We started to get in the high school swing, you know. We knew what a la carte was, and we found the shackles of our school attendance policy. And all in all, 10th grade just flew by. You guys remember the first time you fell asleep and drooled on your desk? <laughs> Isn't that a bummer? A situation like that, you just gotta sacrifice a sleeve. In 11th grade, we felt a lot bigger, and we started getting cocky towards the freshmen and the underclassmen. And as juniors, we were allowed a lot more freedom and uh, responsibility. And I'd also like to stress this is the year of Hazel Linton Day. Can't forget that. It was about this time we started to force thinking about post high school plans and um, I know you guys are all confused or should be or and I'm a little confused nobody has the answers 
But we, we just got to remember one thing, and this is important. Um, if your parents can make it, anybody can. Um, <laughs> Uh, so our juniors slipped through our fingers, too. All of a sudden, we're seniors, you know. And we finally realized that they're pretty much losers just like us. See, we were the ones four years ago that, that we worshipped. And we sped along through homecoming. We kicked back on the midwinter break. We partied on prom when we waited for this moment now. We're here. Some of us are going to go to college and some of us to tech school. Some of us are going to work, and God forbid, some of us are going to get married. <laughs> all in all, we are going to split up to excel in learning and advance in life. Whatever we do, I cannot stress enough to look down the road when seeking an occupation. Uh, in the, the bac baccalaureate ceremony last week, a young man said, uh, A road to nowhere is hard to build. Now, it, times are changing. It's not like it used to be. It's not like you can come out of high school, and hop in a job, and be there for 30 years. You know, it's a technical world, and you have to strive in post-secondary education. It takes a lot of guts to, to seek an occupation to suit future plans. Don't always look for the money sign. Seeking wealth is great, but despising your job is a prolonged torture. Do what's right for you, and remember what Mr. George says, you can marry into more money in five minutes than you could possibly make in a lifetime. <laughs> now, I know we are the doctors, the lawyers, and the blue-collar workers tomorrow, and I know the class of 90 will strive for excellence. I wish you guys all luck, and I'll see you at the five-year reunion. Remember and be thankful that you grew up in such a fine community and went to such a fine school as Fridley. From Mr. Frank's bald head to Mrs. Bowling's shapely calves, high school <laughs> is all right. You guys got to look out for number one. But for God's sakes, don't step in number two. <laughs> Remember the good times. Learn from your mistakes. Strive to be the best and have an open mind. We're very lucky to grow in such a secure environment as Fridley. I'd like to close simply with four words. We are out of here. I think I'll pass. <laughs> Adam, thanks for that delightful trip down memory lane. Even I understood part of it. <laughs> it's my privilege this evening to perform two tasks. First, to introduce the school board to you, and then to make a few remarks to the graduating seniors. First, your school board, and if they would please stand and remain standing until I've introduced all of them. And after I've introduced them all, I would ask you to join me in recognizing them. <coughs> Mr. Jim Ferguson, Chairman of the Board. Mr. Kurt Shrupp, Vice Chairman. Dr. Joel Lipinski, Treasurer. Mr. Dwayne Prairie, Clerk. Mr. Gordon Sangster, Director. Mr. David Newman, Director. Please join me in thanking them for their efforts on behalf of the Purdue School. And now to the seniors. And I say this each year, all senior classes really are special. They all seem to have some unique characteristic that make them special or memorable. And Adam touched on a large number of those characteristics of this class. However, the unique characteristic, I think, of the class of 1990 that makes them special, very special, is their high achievement. To give you who are here this evening for this ceremony a sense of their achievement, I'm going to list some of what this class, this class of 1990, has produced. And listen carefully because I'm going to go fast and there's really some awesome material here. 
They've produced 26 presidential scholars, four national merit commended students, those students are in the top 5% nationally, two national merit finalists, those students are in the top one half of 1% nationally, a national merit scholar, 90 students, 90 students who have a 3.0 grade point average or higher, 40 students who have a 3.5 grade point average or higher, and get this, 11 students who have a 3.9 grade point average or higher. And finally, they have produced a valedictorian with a 4.0 grade point average. They've also produced five governor scholars, a physics bridge that wouldn't break with over 300 pounds of weight placed on it, a band that performed at Disney World's Main Street Parade, 38 students who have earned at least five college credits prior to their graduation from high school, an award-winning National Honor Society, two appointments to the Air Force Academy, a third place finish in the girls' state basketball tournament, a semi-finalist in the state football tournament, an adapted soccer state championship, conference championships in adapted soccer, adapted floor hockey, softball, girls' basketball, a sportsmanship award from the girls' state basketball tournament, a Minnesota Miss Basketball finalist, a boys' academic all-state basketball team member, three Eagle Scouts, all-state performers in football, basketball, and softball, three Humphrey Scholars, the Minnesota Association of Student Councils Eastern Division President, the Secretary of the Minnesota Association of Honor Societies, the City of Fridley's Outstanding Young Person for 1989, the first place winner in the District Voice of Democracy contest, qualifiers for the state gymnastics and swimming meets, eight students who received top superior ratings at the state solo and ensemble choir contest, a state champion in computerized mechanical drafting, and I cut a dozen similar items out of this list earlier today to save time. Obviously, seniors, class of 1990, you have made some outstanding achievements. At the same time, it's also true that not all of these seniors have been a part of these achievements. There are some seniors here this evening who have not contributed a great deal to this list or have contributed very little to the list. That, however, is not unusual in a group of 200 people. It's particularly not unusual in a group of 200 young people that some have achieved more than others or some have been more involved than others. There is, however, a great lesson in that, a great lesson in the fact that some are farther along than others are. Adam referred to that lesson uh, earlier in his comments this evening. Uh, it's a lesson that you learn in kindergarten, really. And tonight, on your night of high school graduation, I'm going to take you back to kindergarten for a few minutes, just like Adam took you all the way back to kindergarten. I'm going to take you back to kindergarten to, of all things, review one of your kindergarten lessons with you for a minute. To do that, I'm going to read you one of your kindergarten books. Some of you might remember it. This is the book. It's called Leo the Late Bloomer. And Adam also mentioned late bloomers in his comments. This book is right off the Stevenson and Hayes elementary shelves, and it's read to kindergarten students. Leo couldn't do anything right. He couldn't read. He couldn't write. He couldn't draw. He was a sloppy eater, and he never said a word. What's the matter with Leo, said Leo's father. Nothing, said Leo's mother. Leo is just a late bloomer. Well, better late than never, thought Leo's father. Every day, Leo's father watched him for signs of blooming. Every night, Leo's father watched him for signs of blooming. Are you sure Leo's a late bloomer, asked Leo's father. Patience, said Leo's mother. A watched bloomer? doesn't bloom. So Leo's father watched television instead of watching Leo. The snows came. Leo's father wasn't watching. 
but Leo still wasn't blooming. The trees budded. Leo's father still was still watching, but Leo still wasn't blooming. Then one day, in his own good time, Leo bloomed. He could read, he could write, he could draw, he ate neatly. There's still hope, parents. He also spoke. And it wasn't just a word. It was a whole sentence. And that sentence was, I made it. Well, class of 1990, well, some of you have achieved great things in your high school career, and some of you have not. You all have one thing in common. Unlike Leo's assessment of the situation, unlike Leo's assessment of the situation, you have not, and I repeat, you have not made it. Commencement really is not the end. Commencement obviously is the beginning for you. And in a sense, all of you are once again starting over. It's almost like kindergarten for you once more. Like Leo's father, we will not be watching you after graduation. As a matter of fact, you're going to have fewer people watching over you after graduation tonight than you've probably ever had watching over you in your entire life. That's going to be a freeing experience for some of you, I'm sure. We are, however, all going to be looking forward with you to your future accomplishments and your future achievements. So certainly, certainly tonight, congratulations to all of you. This is a time to congratulate you on your achievements. It's a time to congratulate you on your graduation this evening. But even more importantly, we look forward to your future success and your future happiness. Best wishes to you and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Renz. Before I read what I'm scheduled to do, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate and thank the class of 1990 for what you have been to Fridley High School for the past four years. While I don't have the careful insights that Adam had about your four years here, or that you have. All of the outward signs that I've been privileged to see during your four years at Fridley High School reflect very well upon you. I thank you for your impact on this school and the many accomplishments that you've achieved in those past years and certainly those years that Dr. Renz has commented about tonight. Thank you and good luck. At this time, uh, with Dr. Ingvolson's assistance, I would uh, ask that the members of the class of 1990 please stand. Members of the Board of Education and Superintendent Renz, the members of this class have fulfilled all the requirements for graduation from this school as set forth by the State Board of Education and the Board of Education of Independent School District 14. In recognition of this achievement, they are entitled to their diplomas as graduates of Fridley High School. As we conduct this ceremony, we seek the cooperation of all guests this evening in withholding your applause and cheers until the entire class has been presented. Chairman Ferguson at this time and Dr. Ingvelson and I will call to the platform the class of 1990 for their diplomas. Christopher Addison. Jamie Algrim, Jennifer Alexander, Eric Anderson, Jennifer Anderson, Brian Baker, 
Mary Baldoff, Lisa Baldwin, John Beeman, John Bolio, Jacqueline Bednarski, Sherry Bergstrom, Christopher Bernard, Tiffany Bishop, David Blaha, Heidi Bohm, Ann Bolison, Ryan Boyle, Catherine Brandt, Dean Briesmeister, Catherine Brinkman, Sherry Brousseau, Kevin Campbell, George Cannon, Melanie Carlson, Michael Carlson, John Carraher, Wayne Chido, William Klein, Janet Colstrom, Angela Cowan, Stephen Cowan, April Crampton, Matthew Croon, Melissa Dodge, Laura Dombeck, Alisa Drulinski, Danny Dure, Daniel Duta, Angela Eilers, Brenda Elverud, Eric Enthoff, Shannon Erickson, Sharon Ewer, Jeffrey Faulkner, Nicole Faulkner, <laughs> Melissa Fierke, Lisa Foster, Andrea Freelix, Cindy Fechtman, Melissa Fury, Christine Geske, Matthew Gibbs, Michelle Girard, Misty Gist, Peter Gedeking, Brian Grahak, Rochelle Grulke, Jonathan Gustafson, Sally Guzik, Timothy Hanley, Yenny Hansen, Ann Hansman, Travis Hardell, Ann Harris, Eric Harstead, Jason Hartfield, Julianne Hebzinski, Jeffrey Hine, Mark Hendrickson, Todd Henriksen, John Hoagland, Randy Hoffman, 
Ann Hoagland. Jennifer Hosh. Amy Hosman. Albert Wong. Jennifer Hubbard. Catherine Vinden. Troy Highland. Jeffrey Ilstrup. Aaron Iverson. Kathy Jacobson. Rebecca Jacobson. Maria John. Jason Johans. Diane Johnson. Jody Johnson. Josh Johnson. Kurt Johnson. Nicole Johnson. Chad Camholz. Matthew Kappel. Tina Keeler. Kimberly Keeley. Shannon Kerwin. Jonathan Kesey. Guy Knudsen. Daniel Coring. Patrice LeBeau. Andrew Lamott. John Larson. Shane Laubach. Scott Leffler. Jennifer Lemke. Natalie Lemmer. Amy Loshi. Patrick Lucas. Michelle Liga. Sheila Madden. Dan Mackelberg. Joel Manns. Cara Maserano. Robert McCluskey. Keith McDonald. Matthew Merriman. Dana Muhorter. Jeremy Meyer. Catherine Mickelson. Tracy Morin. Andrew Mowry. All right, Andrew! <laughs> Rebecca Moxness. Larry Moy. Susan Mulhern. Carrie Nelson. Chad Nelson. Stephanie Nelson. Lee Wynn. Vincent Nissen. Kristen Nordis. Jason Nugent. Michelle Olszewski. Daniel Olson. Russell Osterberg. Mark Ostwald. Derek Otten. 
Alyssa Papke. Carrie Pierce. Alisa Pahaski. Angela Purcell. Orlin Peterson. Brian Polanski. Eric Priest. Christina Puckett. Ann Ramsdale. Todd Ryland. Christina Racemius. John Retzer. Kristen Reveling. Nicole Rice. Dennis Ricksham. Tammy Rodriguez. Kimberly Rudolph. Hasiba Sajedi. Omar Salas. Aaron Schlenker. Tyler Schmitz. Lisa Schwartz. Catherine Seeley. Travis Sell. Stephanie Serdal. Deanna Settlemeyer. Eileen Shelton. Brian Sherry. Margot Seeloff. Tammy Simons. Kimberly Smith. Nicholas Smith. Yodit Solomon. Christopher Savada. Kevin Steele. Kathy Stevens. Jeffrey Stilson. Nicole Suki. Angela Swanson. Kevin Tatley. Nicole Thomas. Holly Thompson. Lisa Thompson. Robert Tomzak. Shane Touches. Kristen Trachik. Lynn Tron. Keith Underhill. Brett Vaki. Laura Van Bergen. <laughs> Dane Van Halsen. Earl Vink. Adam Waldy. Heidi Wegner. Dana Welch. Angela Whitney. Rob Whitliffe.
Adrian Williams. Sarah Wisniewski. Rachel Wataki. Amy Zimmer. Linda Zimpfer. Paula Zook. Join me in congratulating the class of 1990. My hat is off to you. Congratulations to the graduates. Let us pray. Oh God, lead us out into the world with joy, with courage, and with strength. Lead us into ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths new and yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Be with us on the journey and help us to seek not only our own way of life, but also to seek out and serve the needs of others. In our doing and our living and serving, we ask God that you would bless these graduates and keep them, that you would make your face to shine upon them and be gracious to them, and that you would look upon them with favor and give them peace. Amen.